Have you ever heard of limiting self-beliefs? It's those stories we tell ourselves that are planted in our minds that aren't true. Like one of my limiting self-beliefs is that I'm not disciplined. It's not true. I'm disciplined if I want to be. Another story we tell ourselves, which makes me feel bad for other entrepreneurs, is I can't afford to. I can't afford to dot, dot, dot. I can't afford to market. I can't afford to grow sales. I can't afford to go there and I can't afford to hire a staff member. If you're stuck saying that you can't afford to hire someone, you gotta be able to take the leap and be able to budget for it. Budgeting for a new staff member can be really, really difficult, but it's like any investment that you make. Depending on whether you're a service-based business, or whether you do products, or whether you have more passive income streams, every time that you bring a staff member on, you have two options, two possibilities. They're either helping you make money, or they're an expense to your business. And those are the only two ways to look at it. Now, let's start with the first. They're gonna help you make more money. If you are in a business where you have billable hours, then every staff member you bring on, you pay them this much and you charge this much for, as long as they're staying busy. If they're not busy, they're now costing you money. So if you're an electrician or a plumber and you have people on staff and you're paying them $40 an hour and you're charging 125 an hour, you want them to be busy doing billable hours all day, every day. How many staff members do you want? As many as you can keep busy because that way you are making more money and driving more revenue into the business. You want as many staff members as you can, but how do you afford the first one when you can't even start? Well, if you're doing a business where it's billable hours, you have to be able to finance or get emotionally comfortable covering the time between when you bring someone on and when they're making you money. So if you bring them on today, and you believe that within 60 days, they are gonna be a break even, meaning that they are doing enough hours to pay for themselves. The investment you have to make is over those first 60 days. If you don't have the money to do it and you have to borrow the money, then how much will it cost you to borrow the money for the 60 days? If it will cost you, I don't know, $120 in interest per month, $240, are you willing to pay $240 to cover the cost of those two months to get the person at break even? Maybe you are, maybe you're not. Now, what if they get to break even in 30 days? Amazing. What if it takes them 180 days to get to break even? Well, that's not great, but do you have the ability to cover that cost? That's the first way to look at it. Now in your business, you might say, not only can I not afford to hire the person, but I don't even know if I can keep them busy. It's a very different problem you have. You actually have a sales and marketing issue, not a hiring or operations issue. It's the chicken and the egg. You know, I have to hire the people to get the sales. I have to get the sales to be able to hire the person. You have to be able to figure out if you have a sales and marketing challenge or if you have an operations challenge. Two very different problems. If it's sales and marketing, watch another video. We'll talk about how to get more sales. If it's hiring and operations, then you have to be able to figure out how fast you can get that person to break even, how much time after that it'll take for you to earn back your investment, and then you have to be able to either finance it or, or, or take the leap of faith. That's how you hire people. Now, if it's a product-based business or you're doing something technical, or if it's an expense, remember that second option where you're not making the company money, it's actually an expense to the company, you have to make a decision as to when you can bring the person on and the type of value they're gonna to drive to the business. If I bring someone on for payroll, let's say, or for accounts receivable, they're not making the company any money. They're in finance. They're not making the company any money at all. They're busy getting paid to help make sure the company runs smoother. So what kind of value does that drive to the business? Well, let's think about it this way. If I had to do all of the accounting and all of the payroll, I am not doing sales and marketing. If I'm not doing sales and marketing, I'm actually hurting the growth of the company. So is it worth my time to bring someone on for payroll or for accounting who's not making the company any money? Maybe. It depends on how busy you are. So for these types of roles, the way that I assess them is if someone's roles or responsibilities are holding back the growth of the company, you have to hire someone for that role. I'm gonna say that again real quick. If the, the person's roles or responsibilities are holding back the growth of the company, you have to hire for that role. So if I, as the owner of the business who's doing sales and marketing, have to stop doing sales and marketing to start doing payroll, and it's taking away so much of my time or so much of my energy or my stress that it's actually hurting the growth of the business, I need to hire someone to do payroll. If we're a technology company, 
and I'm the person who's not only owning the company, but I'm the CTO and I'm the head programmer, and I can't program agile sprints fast enough, or I'm getting customers complaining at me, or people aren't buying, or things are super glitchy, and I'm risking my growth in company base, then I need to hire people to help me with programming, to be able to help me with those other things, because my inability to get this software fixed is hurting the company's growth. If I'm an electrician or a plumber, I'm really great at going out and doing service calls, but while I'm busy working, I can't answer the phones and I'm losing sales, I need to go and hire someone to be able to answer the phones, to be able to do the bookings, to be able to do the admin. That person isn't really making me any money, but I need them in order to scale and grow my business because me not answering the phone is hurting me. If you have all the time in the world, if you have all the focus and all the energy in the world and you don't have any of those other examples going against you, then just do all the work yourself. You'll save a lot of money. But if the roles and responsibilities that you should be giving to someone else is holding you back from growth, you have to hire. And how do you do that? You look at it the same way that I went through before. What do I need to spend to get someone to come in? How long will it take for that investment to pay off? If I'm the electrician or the accountant and I'm losing sales because I'm too busy doing my work, and I need to hire someone and they cost $35,000 a year to bring someone on, how quickly will having that person lead to more sales, which lead to more billable hours, which will cover the cost of that? How long will that take? Do I have the money or not? And if I have to finance it, how much will the interest be on that investment? That is ultimately the only way that I know in order to be, get comfortable hiring people when you feel like you don't have the money. At the end of the day, no matter which business you're in, the people you have on your team and your ability to be able to react quickly to things is what will set you apart from other people. And so you need to be able to right size and be able to afford these people. You need to make sure that you grow well and you don't grow yourself out of business, but you can't let your inability to afford hiring people slow you down. You need to be able to grow, you need to be able to grow quickly, and you need to stop saying that you can't afford to do things. Let me know what you think about this approach. Let me know if you have any questions. And like always, remember to think big, to be bold, and to say yes. I gotta get better at going. I, I used to let my hair grow really long. I gotta get better at like cutting it every three weeks to keep it the same length, but.